So there has been one video requested from you guys more than anything else on this channel, and that is this video that we're making today. It is how to save money at the grocery store. And quite honestly, like, I can't blame you guys at all. Have you seen the cost of things? It is insane. $900 reduce. I managed to do pretty well at the grocery store most of the time. I find that my monthly grocery budget comes in around $350 Canadian. Um, not sure what that is in freedom units, one second. Hey Siri, convert 350 Canadian dollars to American dollars. $350 is 257 US dollars and 11 cents. About 250 US dollars a month. So I think that's pretty good. Bear in mind, I do live alone, so I'm only buying food for myself, but I think that's pretty cheap. With that said, if you consider the fact that like three or four years ago, I was spending $200 and I'm buying the same things, it means my costs have pretty much doubled the same as everybody else's. All of that said, I have 20 tips for you guys I'm gonna be sharing in this video that I personally use all the time to keep my grocery expenses down as low as possible because honestly, I hate spending money at the grocery store. Like, imagine if I had $350 a month just to spend on fun stuff. That would be so much better than having to buy food. I wanna eat good food, I wanna feel good, I wanna be healthy, I wanna enjoy the things that I eat, but I wanna spend as little as possible doing it. So here are my 20 tips and tricks. So tip number one is probably the most obvious one, and that is to make a shopping list. My goodness, what an idea. Why didn't I think of that? But I don't make a typical shopping list. I don't just make a list of the things that I wanna buy and then go get them, because I find that there are two problems with that. Number one is you forget to add things to your list, or number two is you get to the store and you realize you needed something that wasn't on the list, and then you start thinking, well, what else do I need that's not on the list? And it gets out of control very quickly. What I use is what I call a revolving shopping list. So it is a very long, never-ending shopping list that has a lot of items on it that I don't really intend to buy anytime soon necessarily. If I notice, for example, that I'm getting low on olive oil, I'm gonna put olive oil on that list, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna go buy it right away. It just means that I'm gonna be cognizant of the fact that when it's on sale next, yes, I could use some more and I should buy it at that point. It also means that if I happen to decide on a dinner idea while I'm out shopping, that I don't have to stop and think, do I have this at home or do I need to buy it? So by using my revolving shopping list, I avoid buying doubles of things that I already have at home, or I avoid forgetting about things that I ran out of a long time ago and just forgot to replenish. The revolving shopping list is a total game changer. Let me show you what mine looks like right now. Okay, so I use the Flip app. I'll tell you guys more about this a little bit later. It's not a sponsor or anything, it's just an app that I really like. Um, and I have all of these items here. So hummus, peanut butter, Rotel tomatoes, udon noodles, white wine vinegar, grapes, shredded cheese, chicken strips, obviously vegan versions of both, uh, samosas, tortillas, and naproxen. These are all things that I am currently out of or very low on. And I don't necessarily plan to buy them right now. Like I don't really intend to use hummus this week. I'm not gonna buy hummus this week, but the next time I go to the store, if I feel like having hummus, I'll be able to check my list and confirm that yes, I do need to buy some because I don't have any right now. Speaking of Flip, this is just an app that I use that has all of my local grocery flyers in it. You can use an app like that. You can use the like the actual paper flyers that come to your house, but study the flyers, especially for the things that you know that you use a lot of and learn what a good price is, what an average price is and what a bad price is. When I first started buying groceries for myself when I was younger, I was clueless. I had no idea what anything was supposed to cost. What was a good deal? What was a scam? How much was a pint of strawberry supposed to cost? I don't know. How much was a loaf of bread supposed to cost? I don't know. I remember one time my mom sent me to the store and she asked me to buy two lemons and I had no idea what lemons were supposed to cost. And these lemons were $2 each. They were like organic or something. I didn't even know. And I brought them back to the house and I was like, here you go. And she asked me how much they were. And I said, I think I spent $4. And she lost her mind. She's like, $4 for two lemons? And she freaked out at me. Um, I had no clue. So study the flyer so you know what things are actually supposed to cost. Otherwise you're gonna get ripped off. Tip number three is to do one large weekly shopping trip, specifically at a store that price matches. If your store doesn't price match, you're probably getting scammed on at least some of the things that you're buying. So use that flip app or bring the paper flyers with you or whatever, but go to a store where they will price match with their competitors. I would also say don't be too proud to use coupons if you have them available. That'll be $300. Hey, I don't think so. I got me 300 coupons. And if for some reason there is no option for price matching near where you live, there's no stores that do that, just make sure you're going to a more discount store. Ultimately, food is food. The products are all the same. They all come from the same suppliers. They all come from the same brands. Just go to the places where it's cheaper or go to the places where they'll price match. That's it. 
Over and above that one large weekly shopping trip, I also tend to allow myself one additional small trip per week for fresh produce, for things that are not necessarily gonna last if I buy them on the weekend till the next weekend comes, or for specialty items if I'm making a recipe and I realize that I need an ingredient that I don't have. So point is, I guess, don't be too rigid with your schedule, but also don't find yourself going shopping every single day because even if you feel like you're going in for just one item, that rarely happens. You get there for one thing and you're like, oh, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Tip number five is to stock up on dry goods when they're on sale. Like I was saying, there's a lot of things that you can't buy for longevity, things that are not gonna last long, but dry goods obviously don't apply to that at all. So things like beans, rice, pasta, baking supplies like flour, sugar, salt, uh, even vegetable oil or olive oil, I know it's technically not a dry product, but you know what I mean? Stuff that lasts a long time. When it's on sale and it's things that you use a good amount of, feel free to stock up because you might as well buy it while it's cheaper. That should be common sense, right? <sighs> calculate the cost per unit. This one is so important. I think not enough people do this, but calculating how much something actually costs, whether it's per ounce, per gram, per pound, whatever it may be, will stop you from getting ripped off because I think most people just assume that if something is in a larger package, it's automatically a better deal. And that's not necessarily the case. Or they assume that, for example, because it's at Costco and Costco sells everything on bulk, it must be cheaper. And Costco's not cheaper for everything. So figure out the actual cost per unit and then compare it to the different size packages that are offered or compare it to the different size products that different stores are offering. Don't let yourself get screwed over a little bit of grade two math. The next several tips I'm gonna give you guys involve avoiding waste. I think that that's a really big source of not only wasting food, but wasting money is when you buy things and then they go bad before you use them up. So tip number seven is to figure out how to properly store your produce so it lasts long. Things especially like onions, garlic, potatoes, apples, carrots, you can keep those things fresh for a very, very long time if you store them properly. For those particular items, that usually means like in a cool, dark environment. I have 10 pounds of onions in my basement right now because 10 pounds of onions was cheaper than three pounds of onions. And guess what? I'm using them up slowly and it's all good. I'm not an expert on this, but whatever it is that you've bought, Google what the best way is to keep it fresh for as long as possible, and that way it's not gonna be wasted and you're not gonna have to spend more money buying it again. Tip number eight is to opt for dried over canned and frozen over fresh wherever it makes sense. So canned beans are pretty cheap, but dried beans are so much cheaper even still. Fresh vegetables are generally not too expensive depending on what they are, but buying them frozen will save you a lot of money. Or better yet, if things are in season and they're really cheap, buy them fresh and then freeze them yourself. Tip number nine is just to be more mindful in general about not wasting food. When you waste food, not only are you wasting food, but you're really throwing out money that you've had to work to earn. So it's like going to work and then taking the money they've given you and throwing it in the trash. So the way that you can be mindful of waste is preserving things, right? Using them. When you get down to a half loaf of bread and you realize it's starting to get dry, stick it in the freezer. Me, myself, myself, I've had these tomatoes sitting on my uh, counter here for a couple weeks. Oh, you know what? And I'm noticing right now that they're getting to go bad a little bit. I bought them to make a spaghetti sauce and I never got around to it. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. Take out the handy dandy cutting board and the knife. Let me get myself a container. And I'm gonna chop up these tomatoes into this container and I'm gonna freeze them. And when I'm ready to use them, they'll be ready to go. What the hell is growing out of this tomato? Oh my God. You guys ever seen anything like this before? It's like, I thought it was a bug. It made me jump. It's like there's green shit growing out of it. What the hell? It's like spurting, sprouting roots. That's so weird. Okay, I don't know. Nature scares me. I'm gonna cut these up. Yeah, there's like roots growing in them. What the hell? Ew. I'm gonna just cut them into diced up cubes. Probably not best to be doing this wearing a white t-shirt, mind you. It goes on and they go into the freezer. That was easy. Tip number 10 is to be flexible and plan your meals based on whatever's on sale that week. So if you wanted to make a stir fry and you found that like 
broccoli was really expensive. Pick a different vegetable, use Napa cabbage, use bok choy, just be flexible. If kale is really expensive, get lettuce instead. If lettuce is really expensive, use kale instead. Most recipes are pretty flexible and you can make salad or stir fry or tacos out of really whatever ingredients you want. Tip number 11 is perhaps the biggest thing that contributes to me saving as much money as I do on groceries or really spending as little money as I do on groceries. And that's the fact that I don't eat meat or dairy or eggs, I'm vegan. You will find that if you opt for more plant products over animal products, just by nature, you will save money. Things that are staples in a plant-based diet, like beans, like potatoes, like rice, like pasta, like fresh veggies, those are some of the cheapest ingredients in the world. I eat very well, I eat very healthy, I eat things that taste really, really good, but by not buying the really expensive products like cheese and butter and steak, I save so much money. You know, a few months ago, everybody was freaking out about the price of eggs, but the best way that I've found to save money on eggs is to not eat eggs. Even for people who aren't vegan, it's become more and more popular to start substituting certain animal ingredients for plant ingredients instead. It saves you money and it's often a lot healthier. We're now seeing people do things like using lentils to make meatloaf or making chili out of a bunch of different types of beans rather than ground beef. And honestly, it tastes great. It's so much cheaper. There's really no downside to it. Even in things like baking, when you wanna bake cookies or cakes, there are so many options you can use instead of eggs that are healthier and that are cheaper. You can use applesauce, you can use ground flax seeds. There's a million options. Again, just Google it, but there are so many ways that you can save money by just going for a little bit more vegetable and a little bit less meat and dairy and eggs and stuff. Another great way to save money on vegetables and produce, especially things you use a lot of, is to actually grow it yourself. This is a very, very small little kind of countertop garden I have going here, so I know it's nothing super impressive. I have some cayenne peppers, I have some fresh basil. These are actually store-bought green onions that I just stuck in water and they regrow pretty much forever. But for example, I really like using fresh basil in pasta sauce when I make it. And I would go to the grocery store and I'd spend like $4 on a package of fresh basil leaves. And in three days, they're all moldy and black and rotted and gross. And I would throw them out and then I would do it all over again. So I bought this whole plant for like $4 and it just grows and I pick the leaves and it grows back and it's, uh, it's really easy. We were talking about animal products before as something you can cut from your diet to save money and be healthier, but another thing that absolutely fits the same kind of idea is pop and juice. That stuff is not only not very good for you, but it's become so expensive. Just drink water, water is basically free. And I guess tea and coffee as well, if you're into that, make that at home, it's not a big deal. But honestly, I used to be really big hooked on Coke. That came out sounding wrong. I meant Coca-Cola. I used to be big into Coca-Cola. I drank a shit ton of that stuff when I was a kid, when I was in high school. It was horrible. And not only is it bad for you, but it's become really expensive. It's been a long time since I've really been into that kind of stuff. And I was shocked when I realized how much it costs now to buy soda. 12 cans of Coke here where I live are $7. $7 for just like sugar water. Get rid of it, just drink water. It'll save you so much money. It's better for your teeth. It's better for your butt and stomach. And yeah, it's better for everything. Hi buddy. All right, we're gonna do a couple rapid fire points here really quick. Tip number 14 is to split bulk orders with your friends, family, and neighbors. If you live alone like I do, or even you just have a small family, a small household, it doesn't always make sense to buy a large quantity of things that don't last a long time. But if you can split them with somebody else, you can get the cost to half or a third or whatever it is that you work out and uh, you can all save money and then everybody's happy. Tip number 15 is to buy the items with the longest shelf date possible so they last a long time and you can get as much use out of them as you can. So like if you're gonna go buy a loaf of bread, don't just grab the one that's right in front, reach to the back and find one with a longer expiration date. Tip number 16 is the complete opposite of that and it is to buy things that are short dated if they're marked down or ask the supermarket to mark them down for you. I'm gonna give you guys a little story time here. It's gonna be a little bit maybe embarrassing. I'm not embarrassed. I like these vegan hot dogs. Actually, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll go to the kitchen for a sec. These, I think they're awesome, um, but they're kind of expensive. It's like $7 for four of them. So that's kind of, I mean, it's still not a big deal compared to getting food out, but it adds up quickly. So last month I went to the grocery store to buy some more of my hot dogs. And when I got there, I found they had a ton of them, a whole shelf full of them, but they were all marked to expire within like five days. So I went to the guy in the department and I said, hey, I'm happy to buy a bunch of these, but they're like expiring. Are you gonna mark them down or what's the deal? And he said, oh, we can't mark them down until like the day before the expiry date, which I think is really dumb, but they're not cheap. So you know what I did? I went home and three or four days later, I went back and I bought a shit ton of them, marked down to 30% off and just stuck them in the freezer. And uh, now I have hot dogs that I didn't have to pay full price for. 
And that brings us to point number 16, which is not to be scared off by best before dates. A best before date is not an expiry date. If I'm not mistaken, the only item that has a true actual expiry date is baby formula, because in theory, it could become less nutritious as it sits on the shelf. But most other items are only best before. Just because you're getting close to the date that's marked on something, or even maybe a little bit past it, doesn't mean that that item is no good any longer. It's probably just fine. Trust your nose, smell it, taste it. That's what she said. <laughs> If it smells okay and it tastes okay, you're probably just fine. So don't be scared off and don't throw out food that's perfectly good just because some arbitrary date has passed. I think one of the easiest ways to overspend at the grocery store is to buy pre-made or pre-packaged items. Uh, especially if you're buying things from like the deli counter or like the pre-made kind of like we made it in the store and put it in a container kind of section, whatever that's called. You are probably way overpaying for things, but that definitely applies to just regular packaged mass produced items as well. You'd be surprised how many items you can easily make from scratch at home. So much easier than you think, so much cheaper than you think, and so much better than whatever you've been buying at the store. There's obvious things like not buying the fruit that's already cut up in the little containers. True story, I was at Whole Foods about two weeks ago. I don't get there very often. I don't actually live near Whole Foods, but the items on their hot bar and at their deli counter were $15 per 100 grams. That is, $150 a kilogram or about $70 a pound. I don't know if my math is mathing there. For things like mac and cheese, things like chickpea salad, things like tomato soup, that is insane. I'm sorry, there's no other words for it. But just off the top of my head, here are an example of some things that I make from scratch at home for so much less than you'd pay for them in the store. Salad dressings, mostly made of oil and vinegar. Granola, did you know that granola is just baked oatmeal and oats are like the cheapest food on the planet? Iced tea, I also make salsa from scratch, tomato sauce, like I was saying, macaroni salad, kale salad, all sorts of salad. If you guys wanna see my recipes, by the way, I do post all the stuff on Patreon, link is in the description. So there's a whole bunch of recipes and meal ideas over there. But the point is that most things that you were buying pre-packaged, you're way overpaying for, and you'd be very, very surprised, even if you don't have any culinary skills or experience, how easy it is to make that stuff at home and how much better it tastes. Tip number 19 is more of a psychological one compared to the rest of these tips, which are much more mathematical or tangible or analytical, however you wanna look at it. But tip number 19 is to not deprive yourself too much. I think that deprivation often leads to binging. And if you are too regimented and too uptight with yourself, you're gonna be more likely to actually fail in the long run. So if you're going to the store with your set list and you're determined that come hell or high water, you're gonna stick to that list. If you can do that and it works for you, that's great. But I think it's perfectly fine to allow yourself a small amount of flexibility. Usually what I will do is on my one large weekly trip, I will allow myself one treat that's not included on my list up to a predetermined amount of money. So maybe like $5. I go, okay, if I want, I don't have to, but if I wanna buy one treat that's not on the list that I haven't planned for up to $5, I can do that. And that way I don't feel like I'm missing out on things just in the sake of trying to save as much money as possible. Sometimes that means I pick up a pint of ice cream or that means that I get a box of cookies. Most of the time, honestly, I don't, but it means that on the odd occasion that I do, I've kind of budgeted for that too. And an extra $20 a month is not the end of the world. And finally, tip number 20 is one that I know isn't gonna work for everybody, but it does work very well for me. And that is using a cash back credit card. The reason that I say that it's not gonna work for everybody is that if you're somebody who you know cannot handle a credit card, you can't pay it off in full, you wind up in debt, you wind up overspending, don't do it. You are not credit card people. You are not. No. But if you can manage your credit card well, using a cash back credit card specific to the grocery store that you frequent the most is a great way to get some cash back rewards or some points back and ultimately some free groceries. Anyways, these are my 20 tips for how to save money at the grocery store. As I said, these are all things that I personally do all the time, every week, every time I go shopping, which I'm about to do right now, actually. Some of them save me a lot of money, some of them save me only a little bit of money, but altogether, it really does make a significant difference. I'm really curious to know if any of these tips are things you already do, or more specifically, if there's anything that I didn't mention that you do to save money when you go grocery shopping. If so, let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video at all, if you found any value in it, or you found these tips to be helpful, please go ahead, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel and it helps me to know that you like this kind of content and you wanna see more of it. Please also go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. I hope this video helps. Take care and I will see you guys next week. Hey, kids, we're eating dinner tonight. Come on, Tiffany, Heather, Cody, Dylan, Dermot.
Jordan, Taylor, Brittany, Wesley, Rumor, Scout, Cassidy, Zoe, Chloe, Max, Hunter, Kendall, Caitlin, Noah, Sasha, Morgan, Kira, Ian, Lauren, Qbert, Phil. Mm-hmm.